Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amanda Ray. <sighs> and you clicked on this video because you saw the title. We will be getting into that. I came from a polygamous cult in Utah. My dad has three wives. The first wife is my mom's sister. The third wife is his half sister. We're gonna be talking about just that. The polygamy side of things, what it was like growing up in polygamy and how a yeast infection is actually quite common in polygamous relationships. So yeah, I'll, I'll, we're gonna be uncovering a lot in this video. Hello, you thought you could get rid of me? <laughs> I have been very busy these past few weeks. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't usually do videos that are so like morbid and like this, but I have been, if you're a part of my culty crew, Patreon, or if you've been listening to my podcast, I think it's pretty apparent I'm upset with my father right now. I'm usually, like obviously I'm not on good terms with him, but right now I'm specifically going through something and I've been pushing down the anger and, and through therapy and actually a lot of people talking to me about my emotions, I'm starting to realize that anger is a emotion that I need to, I need to have. I can't just push it out. So we're gonna be talking about the things that have upset me with my dad. One of them being the fact that he married his own half-sister. Not even that he married his own half-sister, but that he did it without consent. Does that make sense? We'll get into it. But yeah, if you are new here, I hope you stay. <laughs> but I understand if you don't subscribe and click away because this stuff is like, it's weird. And sometimes it's like very unsettling for people to hear stuff like this because it's not normal. It's very abnormal, I'm realizing, in the outside world. I mean, when I was in the order, it was very normal, but out here, it's very not normal. Uh, but for those are, that are not new here, hi, Culty Crew family. Do you notice that the background is different? I moved into my new home. I moved into my new home. I did it. That's all I have in this home. <laughs> but I'm starting to realize I think this home is haunted. Last night, um, <laughs> this is so creepy. I go to bed in my room. So, so me and my sister Cammie are moving into this home and uh, I go into my bed. <laughs> I go into my room. I'm getting creeped out just talking about it. I go into my room, Cammie goes in her room. She falls asleep really fast. I, I take a little bit longer to fall asleep because I feel, I feel like I felt this way when I moved into my home in Vegas with Priscilla. Like it's a very eerie, like maybe it's new energies. I don't know, or it's just like different. So you feel uncomfortable. So I was like falling asleep and then my like it while I'm laying down in my room the door just like swings open and then swings shut and uh, I was like okay it could be the wind because it's very windy out here so I make sure that the door is closed and I'm like maybe, maybe it's just the wind you know try you know what you do like when you try to talk yourself out of what just happened so I calm down and I start falling asleep and then <laughs> literally I, I was like on that verge of like slipping into dreamland and then my door my bedroom door flings open a light that was somehow on in this living room area a light switches off okay door flings open light switches off and then door flings closed <laughs> what <laughs> so i run i book it into cammy's room i late leave my door open this is the part that's weird well all of it's weird but i leave my door open go over to cammy's room which is right next to my room go lay in her bed and then, um, so if it was the wind, then my door would keep opening and closing, right? Is that not the logical thing that would happen? It was my door was the one that was opening and closing, so the draft would keep doing that. But then, when I moved into Cammy's room, Cammy's door opened and slammed shut. <laughs> I was so scared, I was like, Cammy, <laughs> I don't want to alarm you, but I think Spee has a ghost in here. This is all last night, so I barely slept at all. I'm like running off of two hours of sleep. And in the morning, Cammy was just saying, well, yeah, it was the wind and the, the doors, these doorknobs are old, like blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, the wind can explain that, but how did the wind turn the light switch on and off? How? Riddle me that. So anyways, I'm naming the ghost Alfred. Maybe I get like more spooked because growing up, my, my dad, he loved scaring us as kids. I don't know if, it, I thought this was normal, but then when I would tell these stories to like outsiders, then outsiders would be like, your dad is weird. Because my dad would do things like he would make me and Rachel watch the worst part on screen where she comes outside and like the, the hanging body in the yard. I don't want to freak anyone out, but the worst part on screen. My dad would make us, me and Rachel watch that. We were like 12, 13 at the time. The worst scene on the movie screen. Then he would turn it off and tell us to go to bed. And then he would come and scare us. 
So he did stuff like that all the time. He would have us watch Psycho, and then after the movie was over, we'd go to bed and he would come scare us. And that was how we bonded, I guess. So in my adult years, I'm realizing <laughs> I get spooked more than maybe the average person. I don't know, maybe it's because of my whole childhood, like that's all my dad liked to have us watch so that he could scare us later. Anyway, so this video is gonna be a lot about my dad and like dive, kind of diving into my dad's childhood and like what, what things he went through to make him the person that he is today. I'm not just gonna sit here and be like, oh yeah, my dad has sex with his sister, isn't that gross? Da, 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 and like bash him the way he does to me. The, okay, the reason why I'm so upset with my dad right now is because I am hearing from family members in the order about the lies that my dad is saying about me. And they're very like, I can't even imagine saying those types of things about a stranger, let alone my own daughter. So I have been driving and thinking this entire drive about what I just filmed. It's the same day, but I, I'm thinking about how my dad really has treated me. And I know I, I, it's, it's affected me so much more than I have could ever imagine, right? Because this is a guy that was in my life twice a week, right? He wasn't really my dad. He lied to me about being my dad. My birth certificate doesn't even have his name on it. Like, why is he able to affect me this much? And I was thinking about it this whole drive for hours, and I just keep thinking about how the reason why it hurts so bad to know the things that my dad is saying about me, my dad is literally telling my siblings lies about me, trying to make me look terrible, just saying the worst things that he can think of so that I look terrible. And it's like, I'm your daughter. You're treating me worse than a stranger. And at the end of the day, it, it's, I just hope that while you're telling these lies about me to your kids, to your own kids, talking about me, your other kid, your daughter, telling these lies and, and just talking mad trash about me to your other kids, all I hope for is that your kids that you're talking to, that you're trying to make an example out of me to, I hope that those same kids that you're talking to realize that's exactly how you're going to be talking about them as soon as they don't please you. As soon as they no longer serve you, you will be saying the same things about them. I'm your daughter. Does that mean nothing? I, I, I forgot to mention this story. There was a time where, so the first wife in our family they had a son leave and he ended up with an addiction, with drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and he ended up homeless. And there was a time where my dad was driving by uh, in like downtown Salt Lake and he saw that son that was homeless on the street. You would think if you saw your own kid going through that, you would feel sad or feel some form of remorse because that's your child. But what did my dad do? My dad laughed and I just, I guess I don't, I will never be able to comprehend how a father could treat a daughter that way. I, Cause I, I don't even have kids and I could never imagine having a child and treating them that way. Not even someone else's child treating them the way that my dad has treated me. It's so, I guess I will never understand it. I get, I, I, I didn't realize that when I was born, I owed my entire life to my dad. I didn't know that my whole life was supposed to be serving him. And the only way to make him happy is to do that. Thank God I'm not doing that. Do you know how miserable I would be if I did do that? I hope that the rest of his kids realize that they have two choices, pleasing him and never ever getting to find out who they really are and what they really want with their life because they're so busy pleasing him or living your life for yourself and loving yourself because dad's never gonna love you the way that you deserve. That's my piece of advice. <laughs> I'm shocked that I'm shocked. But one of the things that he's telling people, and this is the crazy thing is I haven't seen my dad in a long time. So the fact that he knows so much about my life is like, wow. He's been telling my little siblings that I am like sleeping with a new partner every night, that I just sleep around. And I don't know what his motive is by telling them that. Also. Uh, how would he know that? <laughs> the funny thing is too, is he has more sexual partners in a week than I do in like my entire life. <laughs> like, why, why is it that he has to make up these lies about me? It's crazy, it's like he has, to make up, he has to make up lies about me to make me look bad. 
You know how I make him look bad? I just tell the truth about him. Maybe that's what it is. He gets so mad that me talking about how he's sleeping with his sister makes him look bad, so he has to come up with something even worse. So I'm not trying to make this video just to bash him. I just want to dissect him a little bit because I don't think he ever really self-reflects. I don't think he really even knows himself, which is crazy because he's, he's like, what, in his 50s now? And he, he really just lives the way he's been told to live. He's never really going to know what it's like to not be controlled by a cult, which is kind of sad. But let's dive into his childhood. So I didn't hear a ton about my dad's childhood. I, he is the youngest boy in his family. And I, I mean, I heard the story over and over how his older brothers like held him down and made him drink out of a bottle of rotten milk. So he, <laughs> that's pretty traumatizing. And a lot of the stories that he did say as a child, he was very poor, which is crazy because his mom was married to the leader at the time, but she was the sixth wife. And I was talking to Cammie about this and she was like, yeah, I think that the first wife really was the one that had control over the money and the rest of the wives just kind of were poor. Because the first wife, well, well, she wasn't the first wife, but she was the favorite wife and everyone thought she was the first wife. So I think she just had the most control and everyone else had to just be poor. So most of his life he was poor and most of his life he was told what to do to get into the, you know, the kingdom of God. And so I, I think too, maybe part of it is being like the leader's son he felt like this obligation to, you know, follow the chain of command or whatever. I always wonder if he's jealous in any way that he was never going to be considered to be the next leader. Like we all know the next leader was the favorite wife's kids. And now, now the next leaders are going to be the, whoever they decide, right? So even though my dad was the offspring of the leader, he was, he never even had a fighting chance to be the next leader. I always wondered if he ever got jealous of that because he really is, he's like a pawn in the whole pyramid scheme. He's at the bottom of the food chain, even though he was the leader's son. Anyway, so his whole life he's had this habit and it's really just been ingrained in him to follow the one above another, right? The chain of command and, and the, the, the number one rule of the order is to follow the one above another. And I have some examples of that where he and I only know this after I left the order. I, I had an ex-order member who was as, like around my dad's age. She talked about how uh, my dad was a spy, basically. They, they told my dad to spy on her to make sure she wasn't breaking order standards. I didn't know this about my dad. I didn't know that he was a little like spy for the order. But basically, he was trained to tattletale and report back on anyone who was breaking order standards. So he did that in his younger years. And I also, I didn't know this either, found out again by other ex-members that he was involved in a court case where he had to lie on the stand for the order. The order, like the leadership, had my dad lie on the stand and my dad willingly did it. And here's the thing, years ago when I was in the order, I wouldn't have believed that my dad would do that. But now, hearing the lies he says about me and the lies that I've caught him in, it's so easy for him to lie. Why wouldn't he, you know? At this point, his actions are speaking loud. His actions are speaking louder than his lie. Basically, his whole entire life is do whatever the one above you says, even if it's wrong. <laughs> he was born in a cult, so he doesn't really know anything different. He doesn't know that there's so much more than this little tiny cult in Utah. And he, as he gets older, and this is the story that I heard, I don't know how true this is, but I heard that the first wife in my family actually fell in love with my dad. The first wife really wanted to be with him. And I'm not so sure if he fell in love with her or if it was mutual, I don't know. But um, they, they got the okay and the direction from God that it was okay for them to get married. So my dad marries the first wife, which is my mom's sister, my mom's older sister. He marries her and then he moves into the basement, into my grandpa's basement. So my mom and my grandpa were living upstairs while my dad and the first wife, my mom's older sister, were living downstairs, starting their new family together, having kids. My mom was like 10 years old and she would actually help babysit my dad and the first wife's kids in the beginning of their relationship. Years go by, there's actually a lot of pictures that I saw of my dad, the first wife, and my mom as a very young girl, like playing cards at my grandpa's house. And like looking at those pictures, I thought it was so weird because it's almost like, I don't know, it's like, when did my dad start thinking that he wanted to be with her? You know, because she was so little and it's not very uncommon. Like you guys have heard my, if you watch my, listen to my podcast, I talk about how 
pedophilia is very glorified in this cult. Like there's pictures of these old men who, there's stories and, and multiple pictures of old men holding babies. And um, they, they put these pictures up in the houses saying, oh, that's grandma and grandpa. Grandpa knew when he was holding grandma that he was gonna marry her. And like they glorify pedophilia. So I almost wonder if my dad from watching my mom at a very young age was kind of planting that seed in the first wife's brain, like, oh, you know, I'm having dreams about your little sister. And then maybe that's when the first wife started to have dreams too, I don't know. I do know that the first wife, by the time my mom was 17, the first wife did want her 17 year old little sister to marry her husband. At this time, the first wife had, I think, six kids with my dad. And I don't want to get into the full details of how they finally manipulated my mom into marrying my dad, but my mom wanted to marry someone else. She didn't want to marry my dad. But through direction, which I like to call manipulation, it's a better term in my opinion, my mom eventually marries my dad as the second wife. I mean, I grew up in the family. Like the story of my mom and my dad was never told like a romantic thing. It was never told like my mom was so happy to marry him. It was more of it's what Heavenly Father wanted. That, that's the thing is, I'm, I'm unclear if my dad was like, because there's, there's multiple stories that go around and some of them are that the first wife really wanted that to happen and then the other stories were my dad started to fall in love with my mom. I don't know which one's worse. Anyway, they get married. My mom has a baby, my older sister Cammie, then she has me, then she has Rachel, then she has Eskel. And then she had one more son. And at that time, there was a woman who was getting into her 20s who was single. And that's very rare in the order. And they, they don't like the women to become older and get married older because for multiple reasons. But the main one is, the main reason is the woman should be bringing kids to this, bringing souls from heaven to this earth to be in the Lord's work, as many souls as they can, right? It's starting to make me sad. This is the worst part of the whole story, okay? So this young woman, she's getting into her 20s and she, she's not married yet. So what happens? They have a meeting. The leadership, my dad's in the meeting. There's multiple men in this men's meeting and they're discussing this young woman who's still single. Who, why isn't this girl married? Let's pray about it and see who gets direction on this girl. This girl happens to be my dad's half sister. They have the same dad, who is Ortel Kingston, who was the leader before. Same dad, different moms. Anyway, after the meeting, somehow direction, hence, this is why I call it manipulation. Direction is manipulation. After this meeting, all of a sudden, some, my dad has direction that he's supposed to marry his half-sister. The reason why I'm diving into my dad's whole life story is to kind of dissect and let you guys know. It's not just like, like maybe I, I'm, I'm explaining it too much. Maybe you guys already understand this, but some people think that people just wake up and go marry their half-sister. People live a normal life and wake up and just decide to do something like that. That's not what it is. My dad was bred, from, like honestly, from the day he was born, he kind of had way less of a chance to have a normal life because he was born into this polygamous cult. His dad was the leader. His mom was the sixth wife. He, all of his brothers married their half-sisters. All of his brothers in the cult married at least one of their half-sisters. The leader, Paul, married his half-sister. Daniel married half-sisters. Uh, David married half-sisters. All, it's like the leadership and the numbered men, the, the holy, holy men are doing it. So why would my dad think twice about it? My mom, on the other hand, was not born in the order. When she found out that my dad had direction on his half-sister, that he needed to go forward on her and marry his half-sister, my mom didn't like it. My mom was very upset about it. She said no, which here's the weird thing. In the cult, they teach that you should have, at least, maybe I'm confused because I remember being taught that you're supposed to have all of the wives consent if you want to marry another wife. But then I was hearing people in Jesse's family saying that Jesse would say that it's none of his wife's business who, what other women he's going forward on. But then it's like in the Ten Commandments, which look, we always forget that the order is religious, right? Because they're just, it seems like they're all just thinking with their penises. The Ten Commandments say, thou shalt not commit adultery. They claim that polygamy is not adultery, but isn't marrying someone against your wife's wishes, is that not adultery? Then what the hell is? Why don't we just throw that one out of the Ten Commandments? 
spoiler alert, you guys already know the answer, my dad marries his half-sister, even though my mom spoke up saying that she was upset about it. He marries his half-sister, he now has eight kids with his half-sister. And I think, I mean, our family was not close with her or her family. I think a big reason was because, I mean, regardless of her even being his half-sister, I think that there's always jealousy, there's always emotions that come up when your husband wants to boink another girl, especially when he wants to boink his own half-sister. Like, there's probably gonna be some emotions that come up, some emotions that arise. And if there's not, if you literally are just like stone cold, do not give a damn if your husband's getting married again, you probably just don't care about him. You're probably just like good riddance. You probably don't even like him. And the crazy thing is, is it's like they, they teach in the order, you shouldn't have jealousy, you shouldn't uh, be upset when your husband gets remarried. Well, if, if, if I'm not jealous, if I'm not hurt that you're looking at someone else, if I'm not upset, then I don't care about you. <laughs> if all of these emotions come with seeing you fall in love with someone else, it's because I'm in love with you. So are you asking me not to be in love with you? <sighs> it's like the whole thing is just <clears throat> So my dad has eight kids with this girl. And well, I told you guys this story before. I didn't even know he married her. It was such a big hush-hush secret, first of all, because it was polygamy, and second of all, it was because it was his half-sister. So I didn't even know that he was married to his half-sister, that he took on another wife. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that I had a brother from the third wife till she had had like three kids. That's when I found out. Anyway, one day I was looking through, this is like so TMI and gross, but I was looking through the bathroom cabinets looking for some tampons and I found some medication for a yeast infection. And I asked what that was, because I had never heard, I was like, what is a yeast infection? And I was told that my dad did not clean himself after intercourse with his sister. Not saying that she had, I don't know, I don't even know how yeast infections work, but he had inter this is all I was told. He came from his sister's house and having intercourse with his sister to the next person's house and spread a yeast infection. That's how a yeast infection came to be. I'm gonna Google it later. I should know where a yeast infection comes from. <laughs> comes from Boink and Yasista, I don't know. But it led me to believe and like to ponder about this subject because if a yeast infection, it, think about it, Paul has 27 wives. If one of them has a yeast infection, they all gonna get a yeast infection. Take it a step further. If one of them has an STD, we all go and get STDs. <laughs> I used to think, oh, well, no one in the order has STDs because there, no one's... There are plenty of women who are doing stuff in secret with other people because their husband's there, what, once every two months? and the order doesn't educate us on STDs. I didn't even know what birth control was. I didn't know what, I had to learn what sex was in outside public school. You think I know anything about STDs? <laughs> no? So guaranteed there's gotta be some kind of STDs that are running through the order. The more uneducated you are, the more vulnerable you are to things like that. I'm talking about it now today because I feel like no one really talks about it. I feel like I have been holding back in a way, kind of like protecting my mom and my dad and I've been, like, I've been asked multiple times from family members um, to please not air the dirty laundry. But it's like, this is what I think. If you're living a life where you're ashamed of what you're doing, why are you doing it? And I've had people be like, oh, Amanda, then you should talk about, why don't you talk about your failed marriage? Oh, I have. I talked about my divorce. I'm not ashamed. I'm divorced. I'm 26 and divorced. I came from a cult. I'm going to therapy. My dad's a polygamist sleeps with a sister. I live a pretty open life. <laughs> if you're ashamed of the life you're living, you should ask yourself why. Anyway, I know I went on a tangent. I kind of feel a little bit better now that I've talked about it. But um, I mean, there's a lot more that I can say and maybe I'll, I'll save it for culty cup of coffee episode 36 because that's my dad's number. It's just crazy to me to think that for so long I've kind of like filtered the things that I've said on my YouTube because for fear of hurting my dad's feelings or my mom's feelings but then I thought about it and I was like 
I hear the things that they say about me. Board members report back to me what kind of stuff my dad's saying about me, what kind of stuff my mom's saying about me. And I'm like, these are my parents. And they're telling it to the people in the group that I grew up with. And a lot of it's lies. They're saying it to my own siblings. Yet I'm over here trying to not talk about how my dad has sex with his sister and spreads yeast infections. Because why? Why would I protect him when he's over there telling everyone that I <laughs> sleep around? And like, he, it, it's almost like he's like, he knows so much about my life, it's almost creepy. I'm saying that sarcastically. Anyway, I'm just sick of it because I feel like I've had to lie my whole life for them. My birth certificate has Kyle Grant on there, which I don't even know Kyle Grant. They've lied on my birth certificate. Day one, they were, they were lying and lying to me. I asked my dad when I was really young if he was my dad and he said no. They told me how to lie to outsiders about the, what religion I am. Like I have been taught my whole life to lie to protect them and what are they doing for me? They're lying about me to hurt me. So I'm sick of lying. I'm gonna tell the truth. And if they're ashamed of the truth, then maybe they should stop doing it. Or they can own up to it. Anyway, what did we learn from this video, you guys? You know what's the craziest thing, though, of, that I was thinking about? My dad, like, later on, my dad gets his third wife, which I always thought that he would, like, be done trying to get new wives because, at least in the old teachings, they would teach that you can't get to the celestial kingdom of heaven unless you have three wives. And my dad had three wives at that point after he married his sister. But I found out later that he went forward on one of Cammie's friends, my older sister Cammie, a girl that was younger than some of his own kids. And I remember being so disgusted because I was like, when is it enough, you know, for these men? Like Paul has 27 wives and over 300 kids. Like when is it enough? It's almost like it's a sickness and there is no end to the amount of <laughs> disease they can get. And the weird thing about it is, is when you grow up in a cult where it's, it's like everything is abnormal and Everyone is crazy. <laughs> Not that everyone's crazy, but everyone's doing things that are so like, like just like that my dad's marrying his sister. Uh, it's normal to see little kids get married. It's normal to see a 15 year old get pregnant with a 20 something, you know? It was like so normal to see all of this crazy stuff. I remember feeling like being surrounded by the crazy, I felt like I was the crazy. It's, it's like being surrounded by people who believe this crazy idea and if you don't believe that crazy idea you feel crazy it's like when everyone around you is crazy then being sane feels crazy it's almost like sanity is insanity because <laughs> people looked at me weird when i would start to be like isn't that weird that that your dad went forward on a girl that's your age like i was crazy for saying stuff like that like when when my dad had my cousin come pick me up to go basically go on a date because he had direction to marry me, my, my dad, obviously my dad's going to push me to marry my cousin. He married his sister. There was no bounds to, you know, there was no limits to who I could marry, except for if they were less Kingston, less, whatever. I remember going on that date with this cousin of mine and talking about how I don't believe in polygamy and how we're cousins, like that's weird. And he laughed. And I felt like I was the crazy, he, he thinks I'm the crazy one. I remember talking to myself all the time, like talking myself out of the crazy, like you're not crazy, they're crazy. <laughs> because that's my dad though. My dad was surrounded by it, he was born into it, and he became it. I guarantee you guys, if I stayed in it, I would have become more and more like my dad every day. The, the moral of this whole thing is, for me anyways, is if something feels wrong, don't just let it pass. <laughs> if something feels like it's not your path, even though everyone's going on that path, it's okay to take a different path. You're not crazy for not wanting to go in the same cycle as everyone else. I honestly think that it is crazy to want to go in the same cycle everyone else is in, especially if that cycle that you see them all doing is a life that you don't even want for yourself, why would you join that cycle? It's like I saw the futures of all of the women that married the men that they didn't want to marry. I saw what their life was like. I was crazy to think that I could somehow do the same things as them and end up in a different place than they are in. That's insanity. So taking my chances in a different path.
that's obviously the most sane thing I've ever done. <laughs> anyway, I like to end my videos not in a depressing way, so I hope that I'm ending it on kind of a positive note and that even, I feel like even outsiders, even people who haven't been raised in a cult can kind of relate to this, like where you're in a society where there's this norm that just feels so abnormal and maybe you feel like you're so lost or so out of place because you don't want to live the life they're living, that's normal. And I think it's okay to take, to pluck yourself out of that environment and find the environment that you do want to be in. Because not every path is the same. The, this, this quote that I've always hated, that my mom would always say, she had this like magnet on her fridge that had a flower and it said, bloom where you're planted. I always hated that quote because she meant bloom in the order. Doesn't matter where God put you, you just bloom there. And that's the most bullshit quote ever because a flower, if you plant a flower in the desert, it's gonna die. If you plant a flower under water in a river, it's gonna die. You cannot heal in the same environment where you got sick. I like that quote better because I was sick in the order. I was surrounded by sick people. Why would I think that I would get better being surrounded by the sickness? I had to get out to finally see with a clear perspective how sick I actually was and heal from it. <sighs> I feel better now that I've talked to you guys, but I know it's been a while since I filmed and I'm trying to stay on top of my podcast and on top of my Patreon and on top of my, like the Malibu trips coming up. I, I made sure to drink out of this so I could remember to bring this up. The Malibu trip is, uh, thank you, thanks to you guys, we've had donations and we have half of the trip paid for by you guys. If you wanna contribute to the women's retreat in Malibu that's coming up this summer, I will leave my PayPal down below. Just make sure you put your name or, or your address, some type of way that I can send you a thank you card because I'm planning on sending everyone who's donating a thank you card with pictures of us women from the, whoever wants to sign will sign and then we'll put pictures of us and, and just send thank you cards out to everyone who's helped. I'm, honest, I'm, I'm shocked honestly with how much you guys have been so loving and supportive of this whole thing and I just appreciate you guys. Anyway. So there's, there's the link down below for that. Well, just the PayPal link. And then there's also, if you want to be a part of my Patreon family, I go live. I try to, I've been slacking a little bit on that because I, I moved. <laughs> I'm still in the process of moving, but um, I'm, I'm trying to go live more often than before. But, and then also we have, maybe I'll link my Culty Crew podcast down below as well. We are on episode five this week. A lot of, a lot of good things, a lot of good things coming. And I think I'm, I've been having a hard time seeing the positive lately just because there's been so much going on, but I'm trying to wake up every day with a positive mindset, a positive outlook on life. And just instead of looking at how much I have to do, look at how far I've come and pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoy my podcast. It's, uh, episode five is coming out tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will see you guys on the next episode of Culty Cup of Coffee. Love you guys. Bye.